For as long as I can remember, cats in my area have had a strange habit of disappearing. For years, I thought it was coyotes. My name is Rachel, and I live on a back road in Nova Scotia, Canada. I've been living here all my life, moving only once, though not off the road. I rent an apartment underneath my mother's boyfriend's place. I guess you could call it a basement apartment. After my brother moved into the city, my mother was left kind of alone, so I felt it was my duty as the older sister to look after her. So I started renting the apartment when she moved in with her boyfriend, both of us abandoning our family home down the road. Things were great. Everyone was happy. My brother had a little girl making me an aunt. My mother and I adopted a cat from a shelter and named him Spunky. We loved that cat. Often, I hear my mom running around upstairs playing chase with the little guy. He also had this habit of meowing by my door to the shared laundry area in the morning if he heard me moving around. I'd open the door and he'd escort me upstairs to have coffee with my mother, which I thought was beyond cute. Unfortunately, Spunky also had the habit of trying to sneak out of the house when he thought nobody was watching. So, on occasion, I would have to go out and get him from under a car or in the woodshed, as I was the only one small enough to crawl under and get him. It was a cool, damp April evening. The sun was setting, and once again, Spunky got out. So, as was routine, I was outside with my little pink flashlight and raincoat, calling out for him and looking around. A flash of white and gray to my left. I spun and pointed my flashlight in the bushes. Spunky was at the mouth of the driveway. I followed as quickly as I could without before he could bolt on me. Sure enough, the little bugger crossed the road and was headed towards the woods. I was getting nervous. I did not want to enter the woods at night. There's coyotes in there. I've seen one cross the road in front of me once when I used to go on walks to clear my head. Still, I didn't want to lose Spunky. That little cat meant the world to me. With a deep breath and a silent, you can do this, I entered the woods. It was dark and cold. I felt like I was submerged in a winter cave. I centered my flashlight and headed in, calling out and scanning periodically for Spunky. I was determined to find him and bring him back. The world went dark as I dropped my flashlight. Frantically, I scrambled for it and looked around for the noise. I stood stone still in fear, staring at what crouched in front of me. There, not ten feet away, was a small, gray, hairless figure, who, if he stood upright, would probably be about four feet tall. His arms were abnormally long that ended in sharp little claws that clutched the unmistakable body of my cat. My eyes averted from the horribly mutilated body of Spunky to his face. His mouth was full of sharp, blood-covered teeth. His breath putrid with death. His eyes... Oh God, his eyes... They were large, impossibly large white orbs that couldn't possibly see, yet they seemed to stare into my soul. Suddenly, without making any noise, it lunged at me and knocked me down. I sank down into darkness. When I came to, I found myself at the mouth of the driveway. In a daze, I wandered up, noticing that the front door to the laundry room was open. In a renewed state of panic, I ran inside. There... At the top of the stairs were the mutilated bodies of my mother and her boyfriend, along with a message. Written in blood, it said, There are no coyotes in the woods.